anti-black racism was brought to the surface in 2020 as a major systemic issue. After the killing of George Floyd, there were massive protests throughout North America and calls to defund the police, including right here at home. Tonight, we sit down with Toronto Interim Police Chief James Raymer, and we talk about the impact that has had and if, in fact, we can expect to see change anytime soon. It's been a very tumultuous time, and, and uh, certainly that whole defund argument is it's a complicated issue. And um, uh, but I, I think you know it requires change. It's a, it's really a call for change. There's a lot of times police shouldn't necessarily be going to calls, and there's better ways to divert those calls. And I think uh, we need to make sure that there's the appropriate resources so those other agencies can take on those calls. And 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 certainly we support that. You came up with more than 80 recommendations, 80 measures that were brought back that need to be implemented in one way or another. Dealing better with the community, mental health issues, trying to tackle the anti-black racism. How do you possibly accomplish all of those goals? Really, at the end of the day, those 81 recommendations are about change. And that's what the community is demanding. And we need to be community focused, need centric. And at the end of the day, uh, by accomplishing those recommendations, that's what's going to help us bridge that divide with communities. We're going to pilot a community safety, uh, a community health person uh, in our communications so that some of the calls when they come in, they could be handled by that professional and perhaps the calls can be diverted so the police don't even have to attend. And you've got cases like the Defonte Miller case where people, the general public, are looking at that and saying here's an example of what could potentially happen. Working with the community is one thing. How do you convince the general public and the people that are convinced there is a problem and it can't be solved? They're challenging us. They're making sure that we're doing those recommendations in the right way, that we're sensitive to the lived experience of, of people that are different than myself, and, and that we, we're going to do this in the right way. A good leaders got to accept criticism and not be, and be afraid to, and not be afraid to listen to that criticism and, 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 and adapt and change. And, and, and frankly, that's what we're doing. You know, I think one of the, the major steps we have taken with that is, is continuing with the Body Worn Camera Project. I mean, I think that is the ultimate test, really, in accountability and transparency. Building trust and confidence is key in the community so they can feel safe, they can feel secure in the city, and they can have trust and confidence in the police. And I think Body Worn Cameras is going to help to do that. And I think it's going to help with better policing. You're shifting a lot of these resources, you're doing the things that you said that you were going to do, and yet the call to defund the police, so to speak, was to reduce the budget somewhat. At this point, nothing's been cut from the budget, still more than a billion dollars. Why is that? We are being fiscally responsible, and we're constantly trying to find alternatives and continuing with our priorities, increasing the number of, of neighborhood officers, in, expanding into the different neighborhoods, you know, uh, improving the way we're addressing uh, the significant problem of gun and gang violence and, and getting in much more into prevention. Still to come, we discuss the problems with gun violence in the city continuing despite the lockdowns, the role Toronto police have had in the battle against COVID and the search for a new police chief.